Morning, everyone. Hope you guys are having a great Thursday. Having a good week. Getting ready for the weekend. I'm going to give a couple more minutes for people to hop on here. We'll get started in about two minutes. This is going to be quite a bit different than the other workshops I've done. We're not going to be, we won't need a yoga mat or or the cross ball or foam roll or anything like that. Uh, mainly just can be discussion and educational purposes today. Pull up my notes here and we'll get started. And then if you guys can hear me, if you guys can put in the comments, uh, if you can hear me or not, uh, let me know if you're watching this live or if you're watching this on replay, uh, that would be awesome. Just let me know. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. <clears throat> so guys, uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Dr. Ben, physical therapist with Prokinetics Physical Therapy and Performance. Uh, we're located within Truth. Um, today I want to talk about an important topic and a lot of people, a lot of our patients voice their concerns about how they've wasted so much time, money, and energy on different practitioners, whether it's a physician, chiropractic, or chiropractor, or physical therapist, acupuncturist, um, where they just didn't get the results or feel like that they got the care that they were looking for. And that's the topic I want to touch on today is how to decipher and be able to uh, sift through and decide on who is a good practitioner and who's going to actually be able to to help uh, help me with what I'm looking for. All right, there's so many options and it can be really overwhelming on trying to make that decision. So I want to try and make that uh, this that decision making process a little bit easier for you guys because yeah, there's just so many different options you can go. You know, first of all, you got to decide. You know, what practitioner is right for me? Should I be doing chiropractic care? Should I be doing physical therapy, acupuncture, physician, you know, stuff like that. Um, but once you decide on that, uh, one of the things that is super important is that can help right away is, is just looking at reviews on Yelp or Google to get you started. All right. And looking at the comments of what people say. All right. This is what a lot of people do, which is a great start. All right. Um, it's going to help you kind of narrow it down to maybe three or four people. And then but this kind of just surface level. All right. It gives you a good, good sense, but it's not, it's not end all be all just because they have good reviews or bad reviews. Um, it, there's a lot of other things that go into it as well. So the first thing that it, you can tell right away and the biggest, the thing that I look for when I'm looking for, if I'm looking for a chiropractor or uh, acupuncturist or physician is that first phone call. So a lot of times when you call a physician's office, physical therapy clinic, chiropractor, or acupuncturist, the first thing they do is like, um, they say hello, and then you tell them like, hey, I'm looking for, you know, X, Y, and Z, like physical therapy, chiropractic care, acupuncturist, and then the first question they ask you is like, okay, can I get your, your name, date of birth, insurance, and uh, email address? Why is that, why does that, any, any of that information matter if they can't help you? The, what I mean by that is, that's not the question that they should be asking. The questions they should be asking is, how long has this been going on for? What are your goals? What are you trying to get back to? How can we help you? And then deciding if that they're a good fit before even scheduling them. Okay, so none of that matters. For, like the date of birth, insurance, all that doesn't matter if I can't help you, right? So it's always super important on that first phone call, you can tell a lot by a clinic on how they, how they do that phone call. Okay, if they're more interested in your insurance information, your date of birth, and email address and they are about what you're actually having pain with difficulty doing and what your goals are that's not a good uh, quality practice okay that automatically just uh gives off red flags to me all right if that's the questions that they're asking me on the first phone call i move on all right um because that tells me that they're not really truly interested and invested in helping me um because they're more interested in insurance information your date of birth and um and whatnot too so 
that's a big one. And that's usually the first step that I take. And then if they do pass that test, I'm like, okay, how are, how are sessions usually structured? You know, uh, how long are the sessions? Um, am I going to be spending a one, one time with, you know, the actual chiropractor, you know, the actual physical therapist, the physician or the acupuncturist, um, or am I going to be handed off to an aide or assistant after working with a practitioner for 10 minutes? Or do I just come in for 10, 15 minutes and, um, and that's it, you know, 10 to 15 minutes is not enough time, all right, to properly assess the human body, a very complicated, uh, you know, it's very highly interconnected, complicated. There's no way that you can properly assess somebody in 10, 15 minutes. So if they say, you know, sessions are usually 15, 20 minutes, and then um, it's concluded or you're hand off with it to an aid and assistant, that's not enough. That's not going to, that's not going to cut it. It's going to lead to a lot of wasted time a lot of wasted money and whatnot too. So you need quality time with that practitioner, all right? You need at least a half hour, okay? The evaluation, if you're doing evaluation, especially for physical therapy, for example, you need an hour. That physical therapist needs an hour one-on-one -on -one that entire time to properly assess the human body, okay? If you're not getting that, you're, what's gonna happen is they're gonna make an in incorrect diagnosis because they didn't have enough time or they're rushed. And then the rest of the treatment, subsequent plan of care is going to be just completely off because they're barking up the wrong tree because they got the wrong diagnosis or they they're not even addressing the real issue. Okay. And it leads to a lot of waste of time. On top of that for physical therapy, I'm just going to use physical therapy, um, uh, as a, in general, um, and you can apply this to chiropractic care and acupuncture and, you know, your physician as well as, you know, a lot of times people for physical therapy have to get, go in two or three times per week. Uh, because they're only spending 15 to 20 minutes with actual physical therapists, then they're handed off to do exercise. In my opinion, they could just be doing at home with an aid or assistant who is barely, you know, a couple years past high school graduation, doesn't really have a, a clear understanding of the human body and the exercise that they're supposed to be doing. Okay. Um, a lot of times it's people that are in college um, and learning about kinesiology. They don't have the necessary background to be able to be with you 75% of the treatment. Okay, you're coming to physical therapy now to, to work with a physical therapist, not to work with an aid or assistant that does not have the necessary background knowledge, okay, to, to help, okay? So you can, if by finding the right practitioner and somebody that spends the entire hour with you, it can decrease the time that you need to come in. For example, like patients only come in once a week to see us versus a typical two to three times a week as they would with typical physical therapy because we don't use aids or assistants. If you're coming to physical therapy, it's because you're trying, you want to work with a physical therapist. Okay. I don't want to waste your time. So every session is one-on-one -on -one with us for that entire hour. And because we have so much time with you, we can give you, go through an extensive home exercise program and give you the educational pieces that you need to continue to make progress without being reliant on coming in and seeing us. Okay. Another thing is our, I'm going to kind of branch off of that is, is that practitioner, do you get a sense that that practitioner is trying to make you dependent on them. Are they just having you, are they just, are they just having you come in, they crack your back, they send you on your way, you feel good for two to three days and then, you know, it's back. Or are they doing the manipulation, doing soft tissue work and then giving you exercises to follow up with that um, and to allow you to make long lasting changes? Because that's what they should be doing. They should be giving you exercises because hands-on treatment, manipulations like back cracking, um, soft tissue work, um, you know, Graston, ART, all these other um, manipulations, mobilizations, they're great, don't get me wrong. They're gonna help speed up the process, but um, they're only gonna make changes for two to three days, okay? And then the body's just gonna go back to its homeo it's a, it's gonna go back to its homeostatic you know, state. And so um, it's important to follow up with the right exercises after that soft tissue work. Otherwise, it's just gonna come back. We need to be addressing the root issue, okay? Um, a lot of times that soft tissue work and the manipulations and the hands-on stuff, it's really just treating the symptoms, okay? We got to figure out what the root cause of it is. And usually the second half of our sessions is you, we go through an extensive home exercise program and the exercises that are going to address those imbalances, whether that's, you know, strength deficits, range of motion deficits. So big thing is, are they trying to make you dependent on them or are they, or is that practitioner giving you empowerment and independence through education and through the exercises? Okay, to make it so you don't need to be coming in, you know, forever to, you know, to get relief. For example, I had a patient that came in, she, uh, she went to, I did a workshop at a gym in Oakland and, uh, we was talking to her afterwards and 
Uh, she's having quite a bit of, she had uh, scoliosis, she had low back pain, um, she's having some knee pain as well. And, uh, and uh, she was thinking about scheduling, she's like, I'm really hesitant to schedule an appointment with you, because uh, I have a great chiropractor, I've been going to him for 20 years. <laughs> like, like, if he's such a great uh, chiropractor, why, are you go why have you been going to him for 20 years? You know, a good chiropractor is not going to have you come in for 20 years and you still have the same issue. Okay. If you're going to some practitioner for 20 years consistently, they're not, they're making you rely on them. Okay. Um, you need, you need somebody to give you independence. Okay. Anyways, she, she came in, she decided to schedule an evaluation and, uh, she actually just, she left a review on her, the open Google page, uh, a couple months ago. She's like, I went to a chiropractor for 20 years and after, after five sessions with Ben, I haven't been back since. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I checked in with her last month and she still hasn't been, been back to see her chiropractor. Okay. And that's because she was able to get all the tools and education that she needed to address the root issue and not be relying on a chiropractor or a physical therapist or acupuncture to get that relief. Okay. Giving her empowerment. Okay. And that's, what's huge. Okay. Don't, that's, that's one of the biggest pieces. Okay. Another thing is listening skills. Are they actually listening to you? Okay. Or are they, or do you come in, they, you know, you voice your complaints and they're on the laptop the entire time just typing. Okay. Or are they actively listening? Do you, if you say something, are they giving you follow up questions to that? Are they actually listening to you? Um, listening to what your goals are, what you're having difficulty with, how this is impacting your everyday life, or are they just kind of asking questions, taking notes, and not really doing follow-up and you just kind of, you can tell that they're just kind of going through their, you know, through the general routine of questions. Okay. It's huge to, for that practitioner to be actually listening to you and understanding, you know, your, your struggles and what your goals are too. Okay. Uh, another thing too. So those are the main things. Okay. To recap, do you want to check the reviews? Okay. To give you, that's just, it's very super, uh, sur uh, surface level, but that's a great place to start is looking at, uh, the reviews on Yelp and Google and see what other people are saying about them. Um, second is that phone call. Okay. Phone call is huge. Are they more interested in your date of birth, your insurance information? Than they are about your actual goals and what you're having difficulty with. Uh, another thing is the time that they spend with you. Okay. How much time are they spending with you? If it's just 15 minutes, that's not enough. Okay. Even 30 minutes, 30 minutes is minimum. Okay. 30 minutes is minimum. Um, it just takes time, right? To get a proper assessment and proper treatment. Okay. And then are you actually being spending most of the time with that actual practitioner? Or are you handed off to an aid or assistant? Okay. Traditional PT is you go in, you're spending literally 25% of the time, only 27%, 25% of the time with a PT. The rest of the time is spent, 75% is spent with an aid or assistant. That's not going to cut it either. Okay. Another thing is listening skills. Okay. Are they understand, are they listening to you and understanding your goals and your struggles? And then um, lastly is, are they giving you that independence and that education that you need to be to be able to make changes and progress on your own without being reliant on them. Okay. Bonus. This isn't, this isn't a gold standard. Um, but it is very, very difficult, especially in the physical therapy world to provide high quality care. If that, if the clinic takes insurance, all right. Um, I'm not, I can't speak for chiropractic care. Uh, can speak a little bit for physicians. Cause I know a lot of out of network physicians, uh, that don't take insurance and have um, spoken with them, and it's very similar to PT. If somebody, if a clinic takes insurance, it's very, very hard to provide high quality care. And this is why clinics utilize aids and assistance. Okay, insurance is lowering reimbursements across the board. Whether that's for uh, if you go see your doctor, if you go see a physical therapist, that clinic, if they take insurance, is getting reimbursed at such a low rate that they have to do a churn and burn method, okay? Or I call it a mill, where they turn in and try and get as many patients in as possible uh, because that reimbursement rate is so low, they have to do that to stay open. I used to work in a physical, and this is why I started my practice and uh, decided to opt out of network or out of insurance and be out of network because I used to work in, I used to work in uh, a variety of different in-network clinics. You just can't, it does not cut it. Um, I was seeing, it would not, it would not be uncommon for me to come in and have 22 patients on my schedule a day, a day, 22 patients scheduled a day. All right. I was seeing it would usually range between two to four patients at a time that I was seeing. I felt like more like a waiter than I did a physical therapist. I was just jumping from table to table. 
you know, doing some soft tissue work for 10 minutes and then handing, handing them off to an aid or assistant because I had to get back to the next patient. Okay. And believe me, that aid or assistant isn't providing high quality care. There's no way that they can provide the quality care and the attention detail that a physical therapist can. Okay. It's nothing against them. It's just they don't have that, that education and that piece. And I was going, I was going home every night. I was just like beating myself up. Like, like this is not what patients deserve. You know, sometimes this is like patients last chance of getting out of pain and being able to live the life that they want to. And I can't, I can see them and they're coming in, but I can't give them the care that they need to be able to accomplish those goals. And it was just eating me up. And so I ended up just, I turned my two weeks in, I started my practice. I'm like, this is not, um, this is not the way that patients should be treated. And I was going back and forth and if I was going to accept insurance or if I was going to go the out of network route and it was just, it was impossible after seeing the reimbursement rates of what insurance companies, um, give, you can't there, you can't provide one-on-one -on -one care. If you did, you wouldn't be able to keep the, your clinic open. You won't be able to keep the lights on. It's physically impossible from a financial standpoint to be able to keep a clinic open and do one-on-one -on -one treatment if you accept insurance. And that's the same way with, um, physicians too. Okay. I know a lot of independent out of network physicians and um, I've been to, that's where I go for care is I always go the out of network route because I know I'm going to get better care and it's going to result in a lot of less uh, time coming in every single week. It's going to, uh, it's going to be more expensive per session usually, but over the course and the long picture, it's actually cheaper and I'm actually going to fix my issue rather than waste my time going in two or three times a week and um, for three to four months and you know, not make a whole lot of changes because I didn't get that one-on-one attention. Okay. So that's a big thing is you really, for, especially for physical therapy to get high quality care. You, it's, it's almost inevitable that you have to go out of network to get high quality care. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, I can't say that I'm super familiar again with chiropractic care and, and that route. Um, but for physicians, that's the same way I go to a uh, network physician. Okay. Because I don't want to just come in, have the, tell the, uh, physician, my problems, uh, for five, 10 minutes, they say, okay, let's do an x-ray, um, or let's do an MRI. And then once they see the results, like, okay, go do PT. Well, why not just do PT in the first place? You know? Um, and, uh, so that's my big thing is a lot of times going out of network is going to be the, the best route, especially for, and you can say definitively for physical therapy for other practitioners, take that with a grain of salt. Um, but for physicians, that's the case too. Okay. So hope that was kind of beneficial for you guys on how to, um, sift through and decipher and kind of narrow down what practitioner you should be working with and how to figure out if they're going to be able to help you or not. Okay. Um, for physical therapy, if you're not, if you go see a physical therapist and you're not seeing results in two to three sessions, they're not doing something right. And you need to be, um, you need to be exploring other options. Okay. I, I hear it all the time. Patients come in and they're like, yeah, I went to a PT for three, three to four months, um, three times a week. I didn't make really any progress at all, like three to four months and that, that physical therapist didn't discharge you after, you know, two a week or two and refer you back to your physician to figure out what's going on or refer you to somebody that can help you. They actually had you waste all that time and money coming in three to four time, three to time, three times a week for three to four months and you weren't making any progress. That's just ridiculous in my opinion. All right. If patients aren't getting results with us in two to three sessions, we refer them out. Um, we have a lot of connections in the Bay Area and we can find somebody that can help them um, with their specific issue or refer them back to their physician to see if there's a more uh, a di different underlying issue that's going on too. Okay. All right, guys. So kind of went on my soapbox. I'm passionate about this. And um, I just, there's just so many times we have patients come in. They're like, I wasted so much time. I wish I would have, you know, went this route first um, and saved all my time, all that time and money. So um, but yeah, guys, that's all I got for you today. I'm not sure what topic we're going to be touching on, um, next week. Um, but I'll check in and, and see what topic you guys are interested in. So, um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Thursday and have a great week and enjoy your, uh, your weekend. All right. Thanks guys.